A few years ago, a series of accidents left my legs, especially my left knee, in bad shape. I reached a point where even walking was a struggle, but giving up wasn't an option. I knew I had to find a way to rebuild and strengthen my legs no matter how long it took. Through trial and error, I created a training routine that not only made my days pain-free, but also transformed the way I approach fitness. This is the result of years of persistence, adaptation and learning. I always start my workouts with a full body warm-up, focusing on the area I plan to train that day. Since today's focus is legs, I begin with some light running on the treadmill to get my heart rate up and blood flowing to the muscle. Like they say, a good warm-up reduces the risk of injury and improves performance. Next, I engage in some dynamic movements to activate the muscles around the knees and hips. I like to use a deep squat position for side steps, forward and backward, whatever that's called, and bunny hops. These movements are excellent for activating muscles including the stabilizers and also loosening up the joints. This part of the routine has to send a clear signal to the body. I need my hips, legs, knees and ankles to perform. They are really important so please body, take good care of them and give them everything they need. Once my body feels ready, I move to squats at the Smith machine. I start without weights, doing around 30 reps. And I also like to experiment around a little with the knee angle and execution speed. This not only warms up the quads, glutes and hammies, but also enhances deep squat mobility. The Smith machine provides stability, allowing me to focus on form and execution. It also helps me feel safer, especially on my knees, while still doing something squat-like. Over time, I plan to transition to free weight squats for a greater challenge. But for now, this is a reliable way to strengthen these key muscle groups while minimizing injury risk. As you can see, I generally avoid lifting heavy weights. Instead, I prioritize execution and higher reps. Adding more weight might increase strength, but it also increases the risk of injury and usage. But really, feel free to experiment on your body and see how you respond to it. After 4 to 5 sets, depending on the day, I'm ready to move on. My next exercise is the ass to grass lunge, inspired by the knees over toes approach. This movement has been transformative for me, especially when I was dealing with knee pain. ATG lunges target the quads, hip flexors, hamstrings and glutes while also strengthening the tibialis anterior, a critical muscle on the front of the shin. I really like this exercise because it uses the full range of motion. By doing so, it greatly improves knee and ankle mobility while also strengthening these often overlooked areas. With added weight, I perform around 5 sets of 12 reps on each leg. Beyond building strength, this movement provides a deep stretch for the quads, the ankle dorsiflexors and most of all the hip flexors, which helps maintain flexibility and are so important in reducing lower back pain. Next, I do side to side lunges, first without weight and then with added resistance. These lunges are excellent for targeting the adductors, abductors and glutes, which are essential for lateral movement and stability. They also stretch the inner thighs, improving hip mobility. So as you can see, every exercise in this workout until now not only increases power, but also aims to increase mobility, which is such a key factor when it comes to general well-being. There was a time when I completely ignored stretching and I became stiffer by the day. Even tying my shoelaces became an advanced yoga position. Honestly, if my range of motion were a superhero, it would probably be called Captain Cramped. Or rather, the Stiffinator, Mr. Barely Bends. Well, that sounds more like a villain. Add to that all the little H's and pains. H's? H's? Aches? Aches? H's? ages, especially in my lower back, and trust me, it's not the way you want to go. So please, don't skip your stretches, your body will thank you. Then I shift to an isometric hold in the horse stance, inspired by Shaolin teachings. Now the horse stance can be done in various ways, and honestly mine doesn't look that great when I look at it now, <laughs> but it feels great. I try to push my legs apart, pulling my hips up, while flexing every muscle I can reach around my hips, even the PC muscle. 
I get all shaky holding this wide legged position for about 40 seconds and it really challenges your willpower. Which can be a big sunny beautiful beach, <laughs> just saying. To complement this, I incorporate a core focused exercise which will help me with skills like press to handstand and stuff like that. Sitting on a bench, I lean forward and lift my legs up and down, engaging my rectus abdominis and hip flexors. This one was really tough when I started with it, but it got a lot better over time. The exercise bridges the connection between the upper and lower body, enhancing overall functional strength. I complete 4 sets of this combination. My next focus is the lower legs. I alternate between straight leg and bent knee calf raises, ensuring I target both the upper calf and lower calf. These exercises build strength and endurance through their full range of motion. I used to have this stabbing pain in my Achilles tendon and it also used to do this weird crackling tendon noises when I moved my ankle. Yeah, I kind of overused it back then. And of course additionally I had no idea how to cure this. It didn't get any better before I started doing this exercise. Back then I did full range of motion without added weight on the same machine. And in about 2 months my tendons felt as good as new. To balance this I also trained the tibialis anterior with tibialis races which are really hyped at the moment. Strengthening the tibialis anterior is essential for proper foot dorsiflexion. Foot dorsiflexion means if this is my shin and this is my foot that's the movement. The foot dorsiflexion. It's a movement of the ankle joint, this one right here. Well the imaginary one right here. A strong tibialis anterior supports stability, prevents shin splints and improves overall lower leg function. Interesting to know is that tibialis anterior does not directly pull on the knee, but it still plays an indirect role in knee function. Believe it or not, but every exercise we've covered so far targets muscles around the knees. The goal is to strengthen and stretch these muscles, which attach to and surround the knee joint, the quadriceps hamstrings, calves, adductors, abductors all play crucial roles in stabilizing and moving the knee. A tight muscle can pull unevenly disrupting this balance, while a weak muscle may not provide enough support. It's only when these muscles work together as a strong and flexible team that your legs and your knees can function optimally. This allows your movement and training to elevate and strengthen your body, promoting long-term health and capability. Without the right approach however, poor mechanics or imbalances can wear the body down over time, leading to injury. And when that happens, you might find yourself wondering, where did this come from so suddenly? I've always done it like that. But don't worry, this realization is part of the learning process. It's a path toward better understanding and improvement. Chances are we all have areas where we could refine our approach. With time, attention and effort we can uncover better ways to move and train, allowing us to build stronger, healthier bodies. I finished the session with a stretch to release tension in the lower body. Using a bench, I place one leg on it and sink into the pigeon pose. This stretch targets the glutes, piriformis, hip flexors and lower back, areas that can become tight during training. By the way, look at how empty the gym is right now. Well, it is closing time, which is the best time to record. This routine works because it's based on a foundation of balance, mobility and strength. Each exercise targets specific muscles while increasing joint stability and range of motion. It's not just about building power, it's about creating a functional, pain-free body that moves well in every direction. Thank you for watching and I hope this inspires your next training sessions. Good luck!